There is something happening in nature between 3.30 to 3.40, it's a very significant part of the time. And how do people start on this path? Because a lot of this makes sense to people, but in the world they live in, they don't know where to start. If I teach you a way where you can manage your chemistry the way you want, but we need thirty-two hours of focus time, do you think your life is valuable enough for that much investment, I'm asking? Yes. It's thirty-two hours of focus time. Every human being wants his life enhanced. If you don't show them proper ways to enhance, they will find shortcuts. See, a man who goes to the bar and a man who goes to a church or a temple or a whatever, they're seeking the same thing, they're trying to enhance their life, isn't it? If you do not show them a proper way, they will take whatever ways are available on the street, that's all. You want to go forward but it sets you backward. Your intelligence has turned against you, that's all. If your intelligence was working for you, would you create blissfulness or misery? Eighty to eighty-five percent of the population today is on alcohol or some kind of drug. We have come to a place where to grow our food, we need chemicals. To be healthful, we need chemicals. Today, seventy percent of the population is on prescription medication of some sort. To be peaceful, we need chemicals. To be joyful, we need chemicals. To be ecstatic, of course, you have ecstasy. So we are going towards chemicals in a huge way. The water that you drink is full of chemicals, the air that you breathe is like that, and the food that you eat is like that. So if ninety percent of humanity goes into chemical consumption, consciously or unconsciously, if they consume a lot of it, the next generation that we produce, will be of a lesser quality than who we are. That's a crime against humanity. So right now, chemical is a net, it's not another trapeze, it's a net that you can fall into and people experience their own little heaven. Well, it ruins you in so many ways. The important thing about life, whether it's a grasshopper out there or you, both of us are striving to be the fullest possible life that we can be. A grasshopper is trying to be a full-fledged grasshopper, a human being is trying to be a full-fledged human being. So similarly for a human being, if you take away any of his faculties in any way, even temporarily, have you enhanced his life? So intoxication is just that, it is taking away your faculties for a period of time, but if you continuously do it, it'll take it away for your life. So you're taking away or subjugating your faculties for a little bit of pleasure, or maybe a lot of pleasure, whatever, however you wish to describe it. But the important thing is you're taking a backward step with life, because life can only be enhanced by sharpening and increasing our faculties, not by decreasing our faculties. This means we are taking a backward step, though there may be pleasure attached to it. Because you need to understand the greatest chemical factory, the most sophisticated chemical factory is right here. If you are a great manager, you will produce what you want from this. If you are a lousy manager, you do wrong things, you get anxiety, you get something else, you get rubbish going on within you because you are misusing your chemical factory or you don't know how to manage your chemical factory. Why your intelligence is turned against you? There's no stable enough base. So the entire yogic system is about this, that you create a stable base so that your intelligence works for you. If your intelligence turns against you, no power in the universe is going to save you, you are a done thing. You talk in the book about thoughts, you know, we're obsessed with thoughts in this world, and I'm thinking this and I'm thinking that. When I say I'm thinking this, another way of saying it is, I'm making up this, I'm making up that. You can make up whatever you want, as long as you enjoy it. But that can be dangerous, always trying to think of the solution, always trying to be your thoughts. If you become what you make up, unfortunate, isn't it? You… your thoughts belong to you or you belong to the thoughts, you must make up your mind. The all human experience comes from within, isn't it? I don't know what kind of geniuses thought these things. I know in America there must be a million books telling you how to milk happiness from something else or somebody else <laughs> But all human experience is generated from within. What comes from within you must be the way you want it, isn't it? 
Isn't that simple enough, I'm asking? Yes. What comes from around you may not be the way you want it, but what comes from within you must be the way you want it. If whatever happens within you the way you want it, will you be blissed out or miserable? People come and say, Sadhguru, please teach us how to control my mind. Say, you want your mind controlled or liberated? Oh, yes, yes, liberated, but how to control? Because they think that intelligence is a serious problem and it's been in their lives. So what is the solution? If you remove a part of your brain, you will be fine. You're es essentially complaining, I wish I had the brain of an earthworm, this human brain I'm not able to handle. Yes, that is a fact. Charles Darwin said that you evolved out of a monkey. You were a monkey, then you became a man. The DNA difference between a chimpanzee and you is only 1.23 percent. So in that sense, physiologically you're only 1.23 percent away from a chimpanzee. Not a big difference, isn't it? A shade, it's just a shade of difference. But in terms of intelligence and awareness, you are worlds apart from a chimpanzee. So your problem is just this, you have an intelligence for which you don't have a stable enough platform. If I teach you a way where you can manage your chemistry the way you want, but we need thirty-two hours of focused time, do you think your life is valuable enough for that much investment, I'm asking? Yes. Then you must invest, that's what is called in an engineering program. It's thirty-two hours of focused time. We can format it in different ways, but that much investment has to go in. The youth of today should get little more in terms of physical activity, a uh, little more into nature, maybe climb a mountain, maybe swim in the lake. How will a young person gain strength, courage, learn to handle many things? If you… if you don't do something little unpredictable, everything is a set track, it's not good. And do you think people these days are missing that relationship with their own body? Maybe we start there, what is yoga? The word yoga means union. Union means whether you are aware of it or you are not aware of it, right now you are happening here as a part of everything else. What the trees exhale you are inhaling, what you exhale the trees are inhaling, not just on the level of respiration, on all levels this is happening. What you think as myself is just a psychological boundary that you have set up. So yoga means consciously obliterating the boundaries of your individuality. So if you sit here, if you experience everything around you as myself, this is yoga. If you experience all this as myself, myself, do you need morality? Did anybody teach you out of these five fingers, this is a small finger, don't cut it off? Is there a morality needed like that? Anything that you feel is a part of yourself, with that you don't need any values, ethics, morals, nothing, because it's a part of you. This is what yoga means, you experience everything as a part of you. When somebody experiences the whole universe as a part of himself, then we say he is a yogi. It is the science of aligning your geometry, your individual geometry with the cosmic geometry. When geometry is congruent with something larger, it becomes like that, it functions like that. It, it makes you experience yourself like that. So in that sense, you are trying to reorganize your geometry so that it's congruent to the larger or cosmic geometry. Once I started doing simple physical yoga, within a month or two, it doesn't matter where I am till today, morning 3.30 to 3.40, within those ten minutes I always come awake. There is something happening in nature between 3.30 to 3.40, it's called Brahma Mahurtam in yoga, it's a very significant part of the time. So when that happens, your body just comes awake, it happens to everybody, but they don't notice it. So like this, many changes happen simply because simple yoga. So that's why I'm constantly reminding people, it doesn't matter for what reason you do the right things. Even for wrong reasons, if you do the right things, right things will happen to you. Now it's simple, that doesn't mean it's easy. Well, it's not difficult either. See, most people understand complexity as intelligence. If they make themselves difficult, they are supposed to be intelligent. Making a simple thing difficult is not intelligence. Making a very complex thing simple is intelligence, isn't it? 
So wrong sense of intelligence, idea of intelligence has entered people's minds. They think if they make a problem out of every solution, they're intelligent. No, no. If you find solutions for every problem, that is intelligence. And how do people start on this path? Because a lot of this makes sense to people, but in the world they live in, they don't know where to start. Even yesterday I was uh, at this uh, How to Academy talk, the last question was, all this is fine Sadhguru, can you give us one mantra that we can take home and that'll work for us? So I asked a simple question. See, to learn ABC, to learn to read and write a simple language like English, I'm saying simple language, just twenty-six alphabets. To learn a simple language, you take twelve years of schooling, to read, write, understand. For this you're taking twelve years. To transform your life, you want to do it in two minutes. So is that what your life is worth? So if your life is worthwhile, is it not important that you invest a certain amount of time and energy rather than looking for this stupid stuff of one mantra with which I will transform my life? It will not happen like that. That's the reason why most people have remained the way they have remained, because they've not invested in their well-being.